This is Dr. Sam Goodchild of the Ahern Lab, and I am a postdoctoral researcher. So I am primarily an electrophysiologist, which means that I try to understand the flow of ions through channels in the membrane. And by understanding that, we want to try and understand the structure of the uh, pores, the channels that make the membrane permeable to ions. So to do that, we take genes of interest, coding for channels of interest, and we will transfect those into a mammalian cell line. That cell will then express those channels in the surface, then we can use the technique of patch clamp uh, electrophysiology to interrogate those channels and interrogate the flow of ions uh, through those channels. We can modify those channels genetically by changing amino acids around or chopping portions of the channel out we can modulate those channels uh, pharmacologically with different drugs or other modulating factors. We can modify these channels with unnatural genetics by incorporating unnatural amino acids which have specific properties which enable us to probe uh, different functions of the channel that would not be accessible using normal techniques. And that's really the thrust of uh, my project in the lab. That's in specifics. In more general terms, which I think is how I like to think of it really, and I think quite deeply on this often, you know, what does it all mean? <laughs> and I have to say I've come to this conclusion more and more that science and art are very similar. Of course there's two things uh, that separate them which is which are fundamental and very important. One is that science has to be reproducible, it has to refer to something that can be experimentally tested so it should and if we believe that experimental testing does give us a representation of underlying reality then it's kind of our theories answer that will speak to that reality. They can't say anything else. If they do, then they will be found out by later experiments and you know the theories will be modified over time. You know, the bad theories will die, or the inaccurate theories will die off and they'll be replaced by more accurate theories as testing increases. Art, of course, has no uh, recourse to reality, it's purely subjective, there is no testing, there's no way of objectively testing. Whether it is, uh, you know, good or bad, it is a product of culture, of opinion, of, you know, the mood of the time. Now, why do I say, having said that, why do I say that art and science are very similar? And I say that because to explain a scientific concept, you essentially need to use some sort of narrative. You have to tell a story, and we end up telling stories about things that essentially they are immune to any type of story themselves. They're just particles. They're not deterministic. They don't care about their history. They don't care about their future. They just exist in this kind of flux of energy. And for us to understand them, and you know, and they don't care, you know, which way it goes, whether the story, whether it makes sense or not. But for us to understand anything, we have to make it make sense. So we have to, uh, using these uh, experiments that we can probe at reality, or we can attempt to probe at reality, we make these observations, uh, we test them, then we construct the hypothesis, the hypothesis that we will then test again and again and again. And that leads to a story that we have to make to string together these hypotheses so that we can actually talk about the science and communicate it to others.